create the best infinite groove. Now that's going to be today's video. Are you ready for that? Let's go do it right now. Yo, what's up? I'm Analog Kitchen and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now, if this is your first time here, do not hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you'll not miss out on anything. Now, stick around till the end of this video because I'll tell you all about Discord, Patreon, the community and all that good stuff. I'm very happy because we're on the verge of, on the verge, well, this weekend, at the weekend of this video premiere, I'm actually doing two gigs and I'm a bit nervous that two two hour gigs, so in itself that's already an amazing thing. But one is Burning Man. Burning Man is also coming to Holland. And I'm doing a Burning Man gig and after that I have to go to do another gig on the same day. So I was thinking, what is the one thing that I think is important if you're doing longer sets, longer shows? Um, it's the engagement of the crowd when they perceive your tracks or your loop or whatever for the first time that engagement is a very important thing now, how do you create those perfect groove loops how do you how do you create them i think there's a few elements that have to work together uh, in order for it to work and i'm going to show you today on how i do that so it's going to be a condensed sort of like uh, thing of different elements not so much like this is how you do your drums or this is how you do a sample or whatever um, i'm just going to go into how do i go about it. There's a few things that you also need to take into consideration. It's not going to be a shepherd stone, which is also something that can be something of an infinite loop. Um, no, it's going to be more of the placement of certain elements within the four bar, four beat uh, group within your bar. And it's also going to be the call and response of some sort. So there's going to be certain things that have to work together. Um, you can do call and response with different elements, different sounds. You can do call and response with the same sound. Namely for me, it's going to be a bass line. But when I play a bass line, I'll do it in such a way that the first part of the bar is going to do something. So the one, two is going to do something that opens up the conversation and the three, four of the bar is going to answer that, to reply that, hence the call and response. Very important element because if you do that well, you don't necessarily have to overstuff your production, which is what happens most of the time. People overstuff the production because they think it lacks something or it needs something. So you want to create this loop that in itself tells you this is it. I keep making fun about the hamster wheel and the way that works. And when you watch this channel, you, you keep, me hearing the, uh, keep hearing me saying those things. But um, let's get into that and I'll take you over to the live and let's see if we can get into that. You ready? Let's go do it right now. So let's start with uh, creating a groove, shall we? So I'm going to go on the Octa track. I've got the NPC Live here. The NPC Live is going to take care of MIDI information coming from the Tetra, coming from the Mini Tar, and coming from the off camera Mini Log XD. But for now, I'm just going to go in. What is my process when I create a groove? So I'll start with the kick. Kick is on channel one on the Octa track, Octa meaning 80. Channel eight is a master. On this master, I usually have a filter or delay which I can map away or drum roll or whatever on the scene B on the two um, scenes that I have here. Uh, so I can use a crossfader for that. So channel eight is the master output through which all seven other channels go. So when you um, work it with eight audio channels on the octa track, when you're using eight as a master, it means you have to forfeit that channel, which means that essentially you only have seven channels left, which in my honest opinion is more than enough to create your drums with. So we're on channel one. We're going to put it in rack mode. 
I'm on track mute mode by the way, which is when I'm holding function and up and down. You can go through the different modes. My performance mode is the quick mute mode, which means that now the eight channels here, as you can see, I can turn them on by using these buttons right here, the trig knobs. And the track tricks is uh, an easy thing to do. So with function, when you arm them all, you see there's all pluses on the screen. And then when I release them, bam, they're all on. So now they're all off, which means that if you've got track one and track seven, which is a bit of a space between the fingers, we want to mute them um, simultaneously. That would be the way to do it. Now, I have track one split out to the Q output, which means output, the Q output here, this red knob, it's where my kick is coming from. And then the rest of them are going through the stereo outputs, which is this green fader over here on the mixer. So that I got my drums split out in different segments. Cool. Now, I promise you, let's get into the kick. Obviously the kick, one. So let's place some tricks there. One, five, nine, and 13. One, five, nine, and 13. 13 on the last page 1 5 9 13 and maybe 15 so if i'm going to turn this on you get a kick playing two three bum bum you see so that was the last one this one i don't want it to play all the time so what i'm going to do is i'm gonna go in uh, probably like so That's how we do it. Um, I want to get to the, there you go. Function and bank. And then with the right arrow key, you get to this trick condition page. Uh, and this trick condition page, I'm going to turn this trick condition level. I'm going to set it to one divided by two. So it's only going to play every other measure. So. Now it's when it comes round, it's going to skip this last kick. Bam, 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 bam. You see? And now when it comes around again, three, it's going to play this boom, 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 bam, bam, bam. Nice. Which means out of the four bars that the Octatrack is playing, I now get eight. I get an eight bar um, variation, which is cool. On track two, which is uh, let's get out of here. Cool, let's get out of here. Go to track two. Track one, track two. Yes. On my, let's go to that quick new page. Here we are. On track two, I am, I have loaded a drum loop. Let's go in. And then this drum say edit. So you see, there's a very loud snare in the middle and zip and a reverse towards the end. Now, I like that because it's already giving me some kind of character in my groove. And I love this thing as I do use the Octatrack as a drum computer. I would like to flirt with the outside world. Um, getting a little bit of that maybe market conformity um, sound, you know, what's on Beatport or on the other download portals. I think, you know, working with loops sometimes can help. I can chop this loop up, I can slice it with a slice page and put different slices there. For now, I'm just going to leave it as is. So, we are going to uh, mix it though, which I can do in two different spots. When I'm in the edit page here, I can go over here and set the level of the sample. Now, I do level it out here already, because when I get to the source page here, when I get out of here, you can also go to the amplifier page and just adjust it here. But I'd like to just leave stuff as it is here for the most part. I only adjust it here if I need to just like get to my levels uh, more, which I really don't want to. So um, it needs to just sit in a certain level because then I don't have to worry about it. You can say and debate like let's mix it on the mixer, but this to me is if I have to mix stuff here, it really looks very, very um, boring. Uh, people are looking at you performing and you're fiddling about on a mixer that just it just doesn't look right so um as i said that's the kick drum on track track one uh and then this this is the uh, the rest of the stereo output right here all right okay now that i've got that i'm thinking maybe i can do with a clap of some sort 
There's a clap here. Now, um, to place a clap in the sound is something I will do later on in the process because um, it's always going to chop your, your groove up as you can hear with the loop right here already. So if I'm taking the loop out for a second, I say like, okay, let's see what we can do with um, this clap right here. Put it in rack mode and let's do this. Let's get out of there. Let's do this. It's on 64 steps, but I think I can just for a clap use only 16 steps. I don't want it to constantly play because do the same thing anyway. And then I'm going to just like, instead of the five and a 13, which is normal, I'll probably go for it. Now I got a different groove going, which is gonna give me a different vibe altogether. Now, kick, clap, I'm going to lay off the loop for a while because it's very busy already. See what we got on track four. On track four, we probably have a, a deeper sound. Let's go and, and look for a different drum sound. I'll go in here and say, hmm. There's loops here. Uh, let's go for something. I've got my sounds uh, in here as well. Uh, there's a kit right here. Ooh, Lindrum. Ooh, Lindrum sounds. Yeah, okay. In, right so that's on track four so I know now that there's one playing already I can see um, again let's see let's not play four bars let's play two bars here no play so I'm probably gonna go for two bars as I said so I'm gonna get out of there I'm going to say that Going. So now I can just like alternate between the two. Uh, I'm going to say like what I would do. Same thing. Boom, cut, tap. There's a bit of a groove there that I can hear also. I think. I'm not sure why that is. Let's see. I have. Chop the octa track in parts also, so all the different tracks are playing are not playing uh, in the same fashion. Um, you can tell the octa track to just do different uh, lengths for different tracks, um, which means that you can uh, ultimately put shuffle on one or another snare. And I thought that I heard shuffle. What I see here is is that the start of the sample. Let me see if I can. It here the start of the sample is off so what I'm going to do is I don't want my samples to be fiddly you know get it, get it, get it. okay so what I hear is that the last snare doesn't work that well so I'm going to take that out on the second page here take it out and now see if I can alternate this with the clap that I have so I'm going to take the first one out here as well because the clap that's not playing right now good that now this is where an infinite loop starts to occur already because the snare drum on the half of the measure and let's uh, let's get into that if I'm playing my grooves you see 16 steps here which means that between eight and nine would be the half of the of the um, of the measure. So if I was to go out to a different page, oh well, let me put it this way. Um, if you uh, look at your bar, one to eight is the first half of the of, of the measure, and I'm looking at that like that. So and the nine to sixteen is the second half of your measure, which means the stuff you stick on the first half would be the call part, and stuff you stick on the second part will be the response part. So anything I'll play here. Whatever I play, it could even be a, a sequence on a bass line. If something occurs here and something occurs here, that interaction makes for a call and response. And if you stick something on the last 
4 or 3, it even acts as an upbeat, and in the upbeat section it would mean that um, your infinite loop or the suggestion that something is going to start, uh, that happens over there. So if I'm playing the groove again, you clearly hear that, that clap that we had place in the first half. So looking at the clap, we're gonna go in quickly. So looking at the clap, you see it here? Boom, ta-da. And you can take this one out. But up because you don't hear it that much. You will hear it if I play it here. But now I don't like it too much. So I'm trying to do something to help this groove get ahead already. Ta -da, boom, ta-da, boom, bam, boom, ta-da, boom, bam. Now you can debate that the snare is a bit on the loud side, so what I will do is turn it down. Now, uh, as I said, you'll go in, double click it, you'll go in to add it, and I can look at it, I can do it down here, which is probably it. Now, another trick to bury your uh, snare a little bit into your groove is either to pitch it up or shorten it. I can say, like, let's shorten it a little bit. Let's see what it is. Yeah. Snappy. Now I'm a person that loves snappy uh, short drums. Uh, some people don't. I do love it because I would like to get my drums to just like be very percussive and the shorter they are the more of a of a percussive rhythmical impact they tend to give. So that's why I use shorter drums. So I shorten my snare. Um, I can even say like do I need to pitch it up a little bit? Well let's see maybe. Let's get out of there. Get out of there. So do we pitch it up? We can source here. Yeah. Now it becomes oblivious a little bit. So I think that the pitch is where it was, it was okay. Zero. Yeah. Bam. Cool. Okay, now we get into higher territory, yeah, right? So let's go to track five. I don't know, I don't even know what's there. I'm on bank 12, by the way, so I've already copied everything over, so all these different um, things are my banks, my drum banks, and they correspond with the songs that I have on the MPC, so I've got 12 banks here, it means initially I've got 12 songs right here, right? And a song on the MPC would mean it's four sequences long, this is going to be one song, that's how I've done it now, so um, I am on sequence 46 going at the uh, next sequence page, you see that I'm in the 12 lane, this is my 12 lane, 12 1, 12 2, but I've not uh, renamed it yet because I'm not there yet, I'm only going to play some mini notes in a second to uh, accompany the groove that I have. Now this is going to be some something of a techno beat so I can up to say, do I need a open hat, which is going to be quite um, obvious, so I might even debate, say like, you know what, no, let's go for a different sound altogether. I'll just go down and find a free slot. And on this free slot, I am going to go in. And I saw that I was on. What drum computer do we have here? Ooh, there's a lot here. Korg. Ooh, I'm loving that. Casio. But let's go for some of the classics. Um, let's see. AK Pax. Yes, I'm going to go to my. Uh, percussive helpers, then I'm going to go to my drum machines, this is a sample pack that I, is available, I'll leave the link up on the screen somewhere right about now, uh, kick, snare, cymbals is over here, I'll go in and I'll go for my right cymbals, then I'm gonna and I can hear that there's an LFO on this channel and I need to turn it off because my snare and my right is uh, kind of flowy. But first, let's uh, load that in, and then we're just gonna say record it in, and we're gonna go for it. Nice, nice and short. It works. Go to the LFO page, let's get out of there. Go to the LFO page, and look what's going on. I can see the depth of the middle one is on 20. Now it's there, so you can hear it go nice. And I can hear that there's an envelope going on, so the release is also all the way on 58. Bits. Nice. The volume is down right here. Let's turn it up. 
It's starting to sound like something's going on. Now this in itself, this is the sound that is going to start uh, gnawing at your ear pretty fast. So you need to just set it to a level where it only blankets that frequency, if you understand what I'm saying. It needs to just like lay on top of your drums. It should never be too loud. I hear people going like, yay, let's go, you know, full force, which is cool. But mind you, I, um, oh, here it comes. Well, you know, when you're cooking, you don't want to add too many spices because it's going to overpower what's happening. And this is all cool. You can hear in this loop that I have that that same frequency, that high frequency is already present. Listen. There's another rising. Tick, ding, tick, ding, tick, ding, ding, tick, ding. Now, it would be cool if I can get this thing to play with this. So what that means is that if I'm adding my right symbol to it, and my right symbol would be too loud, it's going to drown out the other right symbol. And I do think that this loop has got different elements playing for it. As a clap, get up, tap, 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 and ding 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 ding. And then if you listen carefully, there's a shaker here as well. Tick 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 tick. So this loop in itself consists of three tracks. Now, if somebody went out of their way to make sure that there's three elements in there, why would I go in and say, yeah, end of the story? You know what I mean? So leveling. Let's do this um, listening exercise first. Now I do want my right symbol, since it's a 9 on 9 right symbol, which is, <laughs> you don't get more techno than that. You do want that to really uh, stand out when it, get, when it gets entered into your sound, when you introduce it. But it only should be there to just like invoke a bit of a uh, adrenaline boost. So let's see what we have. When we play all the drums that we have together, go in like... Yeah, nice. Now I can opt to just also place a higher in the groove, but I've got 6 and 7 ready. Now, um, reveal, quick reveal here. I don't use 7 for drums. I probably use 7 as a catalyst of some sort to help the groove along, right? So what I will probably do is get that in already. I'll go to track seven. I will probably go up to an empty slot, uh, which is over here, 67 already. Okay, we're gonna go in, uh, and then I'm going to get out of this, get out of this. I'm also on my sample pack, so I'm gonna go to my sample and hold and find something, uh, and the sample and hold, uh, samples that I have are catalysts that drive the groove. So now that I've got this groove, I'm going to look for a sample that I can just sit in there. That gives you that like, wow, how's he feeling, right? And it's loud as hell. Possible for me to work it like that, so I'm going to go out, turn the volume down, look at what's happening with the effects. I can see that there's um, the filter, and then the added sound is way open. So let's, I'm going to turn it down now already. There was a lot of reverb or delay on that sound. Let's see if I go in and uh, what's happening right now. So we're going to go into the empty slot again. We're going to go to slot mode 67. Uh, sample. <laughs> I'm loving this. This I'm going to load in because this is a sound that's in my mind also a pretty techno y kind of vibe. So I'm going to play it in. I'm going to go to um, out of here, record, and then see what it is going to play. It's not playing because obviously it's not on. There you go. Now, again, this is instant um, call and response work right here because you can hear that on the first, there's also an accent. Boom. So every time 
it's happening. This is happening twice in a, a one bar segment actually. Now why I like this is because it's speeding up my groove. You know? This goes like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and this goes one, two, one, two, one, two. One. So now we've got a little bit more uh, power in there. And we've got an accent on the one, two, 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 two. So if I'm leveling this in, it becomes a hypnotizing factor. I don't even have to change it. Now the sample and hold samples, if you use them, don't use them too loud. Use them like this, right? Cool. I am going to go over to my uh, Akai MPC Live and I'm going to go in and see if I can find a uh, empty spot. So off camera I've already done that, so the mini tariff. You can hear that the, the, the tone or the note of this sound is this note and I will go Now, to play a sound on the mini tower in this case is cool, um, but you'd like to also alter it a little bit. Now, I love the mini tower because it's very simple and easy to use. So I'm going to play notes all around the pump. Because that's giving me the bearing, that's giving me the, 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 the where the groove is going. Now, to place it in a non groovy fashion, which can work sometimes, would mean to play something like. But then it would need, you need to play more stuff over the top, maybe. I'm playing that on the uh, XD off uh, camera. But I would love to go for the A category. Um, building block of my sound. So that means I would not want to ideally play more stuff. Keep it techno, keep it minimal, so I'm going to probably play something with a bass line that can stick on there. So I'm going to look for a rhythmical pattern. I don't overthink this. I don't read books about this. This is something that really comes to mind. It comes up like, you know, uh, like <laughs> if I have to go to the toilet, it comes up like that. So I'm like, okay, what is it? I think that, that could work because of the nature it plays together with the sound and it comes to play together with the clap. So it's like Okay, I'm going to instantly set this on four beats so that I don't have to play for like forever. Okay, yeah, I'm liking that. Kick out. Right similar. Yeah. And now I still got one track left in which I can stick something. I don't know. I think uh, closed um, 808 is what's missing. Or I'm not missing what we can use right off. Yeah, definitely. Because I think I'm, if the right goes, uh, if I take it out, I'm missing that frequency right there. So I'm going to go in, track six, double click it, find a free slot again. Yep, there you go. So we got it. We're going to go into uh, my percussive helpers. We're going to go to percussive helpers. Strong kids, strong machines, yep. Um, 808. 808 hi-hats, sets, 808 hats. And I'll see, what's this? Obviously because it's... Ah, come on. Let's get out of here. Uh, why am I not hearing it? I'm not hearing anything at all.
So, okay. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. So. Uh, okay, that's interesting. Uh, uh, yeah. Filter. Amp. Yeah, of course. Uh, then you're not going to hear anything, of course, obviously. There you go. And that's a bit loud. Okay. Let's go in and go like so. So, obviously, turn it down right here because it's well hot. Samples are pretty loud, I've recorded them loud, so that's why I tend to turn them down also in here as a sample. I'll go in here and I'll go like so. And now, obviously, we can find a better head. So, like so. Nice. I bet you're turning your volume down right now, aren't you? There you go. It's probably better. Even still, I think it's too long. So, I will go out and go to the Amplify page and just go like... with a release. Yeah, nice. I'm liking that. Yep. Yeah, I'm liking that. Cool. Cool. That's that. Now we're going to play. I sometimes play the octa track by itself, but that would mean that you're not going to hear the MIDI playing. So if one of my have my bass line play again, obviously after. I think I can do a better bass line though, can I? Yes, I can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift, cut it, so, and I'm thinking that. This is how I think you can get to a, a groove that's constantly doing something as a foundation. Now, I did not go out of my way to level this uh, properly, but you get my idea, right? Now, um, yeah, I guess that that's that, guys. So I guess that that's one way of looking at it. That's one way of doing it. If you've got a different way of how you get to certain points, please let me know in the comment section below. Now, thank you for watching. Um, yeah, I'm very proud of my community. I'm very proud of where we are, where, we, where we're getting right now at the moment. You know, I'm also very happy to um, get to a point where what I think is cool, a lot of people think, seem to think that that's cool as well so that's what we do on discord we do it on analog kitchen to do it on, here we go again we do it on patreon.com slash analog kitchen but the bridge is in discord because the discord app is much more of an interactive sort of like thing where you can live stream you can video chat you can um drop your demos and you know it's a cool interactive way to connect with people um which patreon is less um of i would say but still thank you for um uh, being there it doesn't really cost a lot you won't be breaking the bank it's cool too if you can support yours truly if you like the content what you see and it's also a place to get um closer to yours truly if you've got some questions you've got more questions than answers then that will be the place to just like um connect with me directly a lot of people do that and it's really cool to just um 
meet up with them. So I'd like to thank all my uh, uh, supporters and my patrons as well. Now, um, the music you can find on Bandcamp, some of it. Uh, I'm working on collecting certain tracks. It's going to be cool, it's going to be released soon. Um, so I'm happy to say that, uh, yeah, keep watching this place, it's going to come. If you made this far into the video, you are an absolute superstar. I'd like to thank you, and you'll catch me next week on another video on another kitchen. And I'm out. Peace.